Welcome to the IAP, the interactive accessibility podcast, bringing you the people, technology, and ideas helping to make your world accessible to everyone. Hey, welcome to the IAP, the Interactive Accessibility Podcast, brought to you by the Pasiello Group and its affiliate, Interactive Accessibility. I'm your host, Mark Miller, thanking you for keep helping us keep it accessible. Do us a favor. If you're enjoying the IAP, share it. Tell someone about it. Hey, even link to it from your accessible website. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, I have a very interesting guest today. His name is Kevin Chandler. And Kevin, I think I'm going to uh, welcome to the IAP first off. It's really, really great to have you um, part of the show. Thanks. Um, and what I want to do is I, I really, this is like, there's so many angles here and your life is so cool, <laughs> to, to, to uh, put it bluntly. I really want to, uh, I, I want you to just, if you don't mind, just starting off and telling us kind of how you fill your time, some of these interesting things that you know I'm talking about here. And oh that. man, <laughs> that's a that's a big question. Uh -huh. I uh, I was actually just talking to one of our board members right before this uh, this call. And was like I feel like things move so so fast, and uh, also like always bringing in new people to what we're doing. And so um, I'm not really sure what all I do, but um, when I'm <laughs> that's in why I had to introduce it. <laughs> right, right. So. Uh, Oh man, so I'll, I'll just start with kind of the, the broad stroke, which is um, I run a, a nonprofit called We Carry Kevin, and uh, we are striving to uh, redefine accessibility as more of a cooperative effort um, of people helping people. Uh, we think that's where true accessibility comes from. And so um, uh, my, my role in that is uh, first off, traveling to speak and, and write books and do interviews uh, to kind of spread that message um, and then also uh, get other people involved and um, we've been having talks this week about uh, really understanding more of what we're doing as a as a nonprofit and our, our marketing as we've got a backpack coming out uh, this week and uh, for other people to use and stuff like that so uh, when I'm not traveling uh, to speak I spend my time in a coffee shop uh, downtown Fort Wayne and uh, meet with people both about business and just about life and um, try and try and uh, be as present and spend as much quality time with uh, the people around me as possible. Beautiful and and just I don't know <laughs> if people can hear but you're actually sitting in that very coffee shop right now so if you're hearing sort of background chatter and clinking and stuff like that it's because you're in your your official coffee shop office right? Yeah, yeah, I, I got away from the the bean grinder. I figured you would appreciate that. <laughs> but the chattering and clinking is okay, but the bean grinder might be a little much for the podcast. Right, right, so, exactly. <laughs> that's super cool. And and um, one of the things, and we haven't really un, unveiled uh, completely what this picture looks like, which I which I, I kind of like, right? Um, sure. <laughs> but I, you know, when I think about what you do and it's such a unique thing and it's for such a unique reason and it's done in such a unique way and we'll we'll get to what all that looks like but one of the things that it makes me think about is the amazing like network of friends that you must have like you really have this in in you know just in my little exploration i imagine the people that you're surrounded by and they must be just amazing an amazing group of people can you talk to me a little bit about those relationships and how you've developed it and how that's helped you like push your cause forward? Yeah. I mean, they, they are really amazing people and it's funny because, you know, people see the, the trips that we did to Europe and when we did to China. And so they, they think that that group of friends is like three or four guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, there are so many other people behind the scenes or at mm -hmm. home. Uh, that are involved, not just in the nonprofit, but in my own life that um, really just make life possible. Um, and, and so I, it's funny because I, I end up uh, getting to speak and, and stuff like that, but they're really the, the heroes here. They're the ones that um, make all this stuff happen. I mean, if it weren't for them, I would not be getting out of bed, literally. So, right. um, yeah, so I've got, 
uh, two roommates that are, are really awesome, uh, one of which is gone on both uh, both trips and uh, with me and he and I travel a lot together, um, Ben Duvall, and then uh, the other roommate is Matt Spurgeon, and uh, he's uh, actually a physical therapist himself, and so uh, he's kind of involved in that world uh, in his own way, and then we've got about about 10 other guys uh, who just come in throughout the day and night to help out on a volunteer basis uh, to make my life happen, and, and that's that's only here in Fort Wayne, and I've got you know friends elsewhere that whenever I travel, they're they're willing to pitch in and um, either come along or meet up with us where we are. And uh, it's just it's so encouraging, um, and it it kind of it's it's humbling, but in the right way. <laughs> you know, it, right, right. it shows me how much how much I'm loved and how much I'm valued, and uh, and so that kind of keeps me in check. Um, in, in a good way so uh, yeah. well yeah i really i enjoy it <laughs> well you know and that's evident and i think that you know the other thing i would say kind of on your friend's behalf is that um you know you may feel all those things but they're getting they're getting something out of it too and it's really enriching their lives and they're and they're sure. enjoying it i mean just looking at some of the videos and stuff that you know they're, they're, it's not so so let's let's back up a little bit right um and and talk about why why you need this kind of assistance so um you have uh, muscular dystrophy. Can you talk to me about how that's affected your life? And, and just let's just disclose what it is that people are actually doing for you to sure. uh, get you through your day and, and, and more importantly, to get you on you know, these awesome adventures that, that you and your friends take together. Yeah. Yeah. So um, actually, I have spinal muscular atrophy, uh, mm -hmm. which um, essentially means that the message from my brain to my spinal cord gets messed up. So I, I uh, spend most of my time in a wheelchair uh, when my friends aren't carrying me around on their backs. And, uh, and you know, um, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair. My, my arms are pretty weak and my legs don't work. And, uh, and so that's why I need the help that I do, um, especially when I'm out of my chair. I'm pretty, uh, pretty helpless in the, in the regard of what I can do for myself. Um, but I would also say, you know, you, you kind of touched on this, this is, uh, what the guys get out of it and the, the joy that we experience together is, uh, it all comes from the fact that, you know, it's, it's a friendship. It's not, um, it's not just a service, you know, it's not when, uh, so, so three years ago we went to Europe and we left my wheelchair, uh, back home in uh, the States and just backpacked around and the guys carried me in a backpack and, and people are like, Oh, it's amazing that they did this for you. And, uh, and the truth is that we as a group of friends wanted to take this trip. Um, and this was the way that we had to do it together and, uh, for me to be able to be there and be part of it. So, so it really is just some um, friends working together, um, mm -hmm. both, disabled and able-bodied uh, kind of pitching in uh, in our in the ways that we've been gifted <laughs> each of us and so uh, so yeah I can I can look out for them and uh, be an encouragement uh, in my own way and, and they can be an encouragement in theirs that's that's so. amazing and I can see where people would stumble upon that scene and have that impression like oh look at what these guys are doing for you but clearly it's something they're doing with you. Right. And, um, it's to me, the cool thing in, in hearing you talk about it is that it's like, there's not a lot of consideration about it, right? It is just what needs to be done. Just like they need to pack a bag and carry that with them. Just like they yeah. um, you know, need to make sure they remember their toothbrush, just like they need to, you know, um, wake up their buddy when the plane lands so that he knows uh, when the plane lands, he knows it's landed. Just those normal things that friends would do for each other along the way. This, it seems to me like this is just sort of, oh, another thing like, this, you know, Kevin needs to go on the back and we'll head out. Let's go. And right. it's not exactly. really like, oh, we're accommodating or, or like you said, it doesn't be, even feel like a service. It's just, this is how it works and this is what we're doing we all want to be together and we all want to have this adventure yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's that's exactly <laughs> well and i think it's a, a testament to a, of a lot of things right you know you as a human being and your your power 
and ability to cultivate those kind of relationships, you know, and mm. where, you know, an outsider might look and say, geez, what does this guy really have to offer, you know, and what you have to offer might not be, you know, um, physical, it might, it's definitely emotional and intellectual and all those kind of things. And just the power of that to contribute to a group of friends um, in a way that uh, makes this a, something that's second nature to them is amazing. Uh, and that's, you know, well, I got to ask you, let me, let's divert a minute, right? Because I've looked at some of your video stuff and, you know, you've got this kind of obvious nickname, I think, of, of um, the human backpack that, um, right. <laughs> because you fit on their back and it's really cool. You've got the backpack that you're, uh, that you're creating um, or you're playing on that, right? So you guys obviously have a good sense of humor. But in one of these videos, one of your f friends is uh, carrying a katana. So I feel like you're, you're in pretty good hands. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's well, nobody's gonna get through to you <laughs> well i i'm glad that it uh suggests that he knows how to use the katana but <laughs> so it might it actually looks, be more dangerous than actually <laughs> it, it might be yeah yeah no that was from a, a very early experience um when we decided it was actually his idea to uh go into the sewer system and uh in north carolina <laughs> and we were like i was like sure why not let's do it and uh, it was something he had always wanted to explore and wanted me to go with him and so uh that's where the backpack came from originally oh nice and uh and so we had the katana because we grew up on ninja turtles so it just kind of made sense you know it's like well let's go into the sewers and let's take a samurai sword with us you know why not so that's that's perfect. Which Ninja Turtle do you most identify with? Oh man, you know it's changed over the years as I've gotten older. Um, so now, oh man, it's an important. I don't question. know. It is. It's a very important question. One that I haven't really thought through lately. Uh, I don't know. Can I get back to you on that? You can come back to it. I'll All right, but don't more. don't let me forget. I won't let you forget. We're huge uh, Ninja Turtle fans over here. I live in New Hampshire, right, in a small town called Exeter. And about 20 minutes northwest of us is the town of, or city, really, of Dover, New Hampshire, which is, in fact, where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were first created. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So anybody paying attention to that, it's that Dover is just north of uh, the University of New Hampshire. So wow, you you. You just keep pulling out all the trivia about New Hampshire. That's well, yeah, well, because I live here. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. I, I start, start me talking on Fort Wayne. It'll be over pretty quick. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, know, I know a guy named Kevin uh, that does some really cool stuff that lives in Fort Wayne, and that's about the end of it. Yeah, and we have coffee. And, that's, and that's you have coffee. It, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys don't have office space. You, have, you, you all work out of coffee shops. That's what that's Right, what exactly. Doing. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the whole thing. <laughs> So you guys are, uh, you're doing, you're doing more than just, um, hanging out with your friends, you know, and I, and I gotta say, I'm jealous. It looks like you guys have sort of created this perpetual, uh, uh college feel, right? Um, <laughs> you know, again, it looks like you guys are goofing around and having fun and having adventures. And, um, I really, you know, a lot of people are probably listening to this going, I wish, I wish that's how my every day went, you know, <laughs> um, but kudos to you guys. I think that's really cool. And and you're not just you're not just goofing around. This is really for a cause, and you're actually writing some books as well, um, in a couple of different um, genres. It sounds like. But can you talk to me about um, how this these particular experiences are starting to inspire that writing for you? Um, yeah. So uh, when we got back from our original trip, I uh, decided to write uh, a memoir about that experience, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I had never, I, I always loved writing, um, but I, I had never wanted to write anything about myself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but this just seemed like something that should be written. So I, uh, I kind of pursued that. And um, through that process, uh, I don't know what happened, but at some point in there, it kind of clicked where uh, I could write about my experience, but I could also write um, you know, fiction and, and nonfiction about like concepts of, of uh, accessibility and everything. And uh, I could still tie my own experience into it and uh, in a, still in a creative writing way. And um, I also, I realized too that uh, some of my favorite writers, as I've learned more about their lives, I realized that, uh, you know, you write what you know. And so, mm -hmm. It comes through and it affects 
uh, everything that you write. So uh, my my favorite writer, uh, J.M. Barry, who is famous for writing Peter Pan, uh, he also wrote a ton of novels about a fictional uh, village in uh, Scotland, a fictional town uh, that turned out to actually be based on the town he grew up in. Mm. And uh, Wendell Airy has, has done the same, and uh, Frederick Beekner and a ton of other guys. And, uh, you know, Tolkien did a lot of that too, kind of basing things off of uh, childhood memories and everything. And so uh, just kind of embracing that and realizing that uh, I love. I love writing about adventure, but um, I also uh, can see the adventure in everyday life, mm. and uh, and the, also the crazy adventures that we've had, and uh, kind of tying all of that in and being able to uh, allow it to contribute to my storytelling. Uh, it's been really liberating. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. The, you know. Um, Stephen King lives um, up in Maine, right? A little bit away from us. And he has family in this area. And um, in his book on writing, he really, you know, you hit on the, one of the major points of that book. And that is that you write what you know, you know, if you don't, if you don't know it, you don't, um, you know, you're not going to write it well. It doesn't matter who you are. So you, even if it's, like he does, it's inspired from things that you're familiar with, just like you were, you were talking about. So a lot of his towns and stuff are exactly like that. So let me ask you this in that vein was when you first started writing was your first sort of like, Hey, I think I'm going to take a stab at this writing thing. Was that in response to that trip or had you been writing before that? Um, you know, I remember uh, writing short stories and, and really bad comics when I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So yeah. it's, it's always been a, a part of me. Um, but after college, a friend of mine introduced me to uh, an author named Walter Moores, and uh, he's a German uh, political cartoonist who also writes these super weird novels. Uh, and so they were like, hey, I think you would like this. So I read it, and I remember uh, about halfway through the first book, I felt like he was jumping on the page and saying, um, don't be afraid to, to tell your stories, like whatever's in your head. And so uh, I started doing that, just um, coming up with, you know, I had always been developing stories in my head, and so I, I just started putting them down on paper and um, writing about what I enjoyed writing about and uh, writing about what I wanted to read basically and, right. uh, and so at the time it was a lot of like uh, detective stuff and zombie stuff and gotcha. you know I was I was in that in that zone um, but I self-published a lot of stuff back then uh, did a, uh, a Bible study kind of thing um, that was more narrative and uh, yeah just did did a lot of stuff like that um, but it was always self-published. And when we were going on this trip, um, I really got the sense from some, uh, some other writers and, and publishers and editors uh, who said, you know, if you, if you write this as a book, um, as a memoir, um, we think it will actually go somewhere. And so, uh, you know, highly pub publishable. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's when I really pursued that. Yeah. So, and are these, uh, is, is that experience and, and writing about it, is that starting to inform some of your future fiction? Uh, you know, it actually is, and I didn't even realize it was until, mm -hmm. um, until I guess, maybe recently. Uh, there's actually characters that I've been toying with for uh, a few years now that I realize, oh, wait, this kind of ties in with my own experience. And so um, I've noticed that in everything I write, there's always some sort of uh, physical uh, limitation or, or disability uh, that is sometimes it's addressed, but a lot of times it's just kind of part of the character, you know, um, like a, a guy has a fake leg or a guy's in right. a wheelchair, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and so I, I kind of like that, but it's just a part of the world um yeah. handled in a matter of fact way yeah and then you see how that interacts with uh the people around him um or her you know so 
Uh, so we'll see. I don't know how it will manifest itself ultimately, but um, do you ever think I'm excited. About, do you ever think about being more, um, just more direct and actually writing a story um, with a character that's pretty much in your exact situation? Um, yeah, I've, I actually have, um, and I've got a, a story that I've been kind of tinkering with for several years um, and just kind of waiting for it to uh, fully develop itself and mm. as I write down pieces of it. But uh, one of the main characters, or the two main characters, um, are essentially uh, a guy that's disabled and, and his best friend and he gets carried around. Mm -hmm. um, kind of just uh, dragged around wherever they go and stuff. Right. So, uh, and they, they go on adventures around the countryside. And so we'll, we'll see, I don't know. Um, or I may decide that's a little too close to what I've already written and scrap it. So, um, I mean, uh, but the outside yeah. audience perspective, I can tell you that it, what, what would interest me about that story is I would imagine the relationship development between those two people um, sure. and the, the difficulties and the things that they overcome together and the, you know, goods and the bads and all that kind of stuff. It would be an, yeah. an opportunity to explore that relationship in that way. And you yeah. probably uniquely have um, uh, insight for that because I would imagine that there is something that's very different about uh, your relationship with somebody who's literally carrying you on, your, on their back and is in essence always sort of in like supreme control of what happens, right? If you want to go left and they don't, they, just, you know, <laughs> and if, they're, if the relationship's good, maybe they consider that, right? But if they want to go right and you don't want them to, that's what's going to happen, you know? So there's a real, like a real trust. There's a lot of, there's a lot of amplifications of sort of normal um, uh, qualities in a relationship and just shifts in the way that two people would relate to each other that I think would be amazing to explore and probably help, um, you know, illuminate sort of some things for uh, people who aren't in that circumstance that would help them understand themselves better too. So yeah, be yeah, interesting personally. Um, yeah. Well, because on, on that note, I mean, I think uh, for the disabled or able-bodied uh, in any relationship that they have, I think it is applicable because uh, what you end up seeing happen um, from my experience is that when, you, when you're physically attached, like when you're on someone's back and carried around, uh, you end up sharing experience uh, right. together. And uh, there were times, there have been times when um, I have gotten to see the world through the perspective of whoever's carrying me. Uh, we went, while we were in England, uh, we went to the British Museum, which, I mean, in general, I could say it's really cool, but um, we had a guy on our trip who was a, a, a history teacher um, at a high school or middle school. And, uh, and so I actually was on his back for that part of the day. And, uh, and so going through the exhibits with this guy who is, studied these things in a textbook you know so for so long uh and getting to experience his excitement uh, i mean he was just enthralled <laughs> and uh and so kind of by proxy i became uh enthralled with it as well uh it was such a rich experience that i would have never had on my own um, and so i think that that's something that people can glean from uh just as a community and, yeah. and growing together uh, as people you know that's a very interesting point and i think that in this world of sort of distractions right you know cell phones and there's always something better around every other corner and you know it's it's very different than the world was 50 100 years ago um and and you know like I, I can see myself maybe hanging out with this same guy and being pretty interested um, in talking. <laughs> and, but I have sort of this unique option to walk away and come back and mm. experience things uh, independently and then back with that individual. And I probably would do those things, right? Yeah. Whereas with you, you're in this situation where you have no choice but to ride that out all the way through with that individual. And because you can't succumb to those other distractions 
it, in, it enhance, ultimately enhances your experience is, the, is what I'm hearing from you. And I think that that's a really interesting perspective. And, it, and again, you know, it might cause audiences to be introspective. It certainly causes me to be introspective. What if I couldn't walk away from this, you know, this person's side and I had to go through this with them? Where would I ultimately end up versus where yeah. I end up when I kind of get bored and shuffle off and look at something else or whatever, whatever the case is? Yeah, it's kind of a, a new... Uh, or a different level of selflessness, right? You know, like, like, oh, I, I really have to be here. I have to be present. Yeah. And, uh, and so that can, that can't be anything but a growing experience, yeah. I think. And even if you head off in another direction, that guy's with you. <laughs> right. And there's no. Exactly. It's like you can. You might pick the direction, right? You can wander off, but he's going to wander off with you. That's yeah. Really, yeah. That's really cool. So, I think. Yeah. I think that. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to pour through some of your writings because I think that your perspective has got is just an amazing one and probably one that can really inform um, a better way for for other people to kind of go through their lives and um, certainly just a unique and, and worthwhile perspective to share with the world. So that's and that's like thanks for doing that, right? You could just have all these cool experiences and do what you do and not not put it down on paper for the rest of us. So that's, uh, that's really cool. you. You're motivated to do that. Yeah. Tell me, we got to we got to wrap up here um, pretty soon. So tell me, like, what's what are your hopes for the future? How are you going to move? Um, you know, are you thinking about um, expanding that the the nonprofit? Are you thinking about more adventures, more books? Like, what do you really what do you really see right now for you? In yeah, the, um, five years or so. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Um, well, you know. <laughs> Who knows what will happen in five tomorrow, years? Then. But, uh, tomorrow. Uh, well, tomorrow I get on a plane and fly <laughs> up. Now, um, uh, coffee. Right, I'll be drinking coffee. Um, so, you know, uh, right now we, as a, a nonprofit, are really figuring out uh, the next stage of who we are. Uh, this week we were finally uh, able to release uh, or put on sale uh, the backpack uh, that we design for our, our travels, um, we were able to mass produce it. And so now it's available on the website. Um, and so we're kind of going from being simply a, a nonprofit that's all about inspiration uh, to being a nonprofit that provides, uh, I guess, the, the practical steps uh, to apply that in inspiration and um, move forwarding your own experience and being able to equip people uh, to have that experience as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right now we're, we're really focused on the backpack and uh, giving those to the, the people that can, uh, they can best benefit or the people that would love to have adventures of their own. Um, and then as we see how that goes, um, you know, we'll hopefully be able to provide other uh, similar um, equipment or services you know we we'd love to come alongside families and um you know work through what accessibility looks like for them specifically um which which we've been able to do over the past i would say uh three and a half four years uh as people have just approached us and we had conversations uh either over email or facebook or um you know in person at mm -hmm conferences or churches or schools um, uh, it's been so cool to talk through things with families and be an encouragement and uh, be able to help them figure out uh, what their lives look like because uh, you know mine works one way and, and other people's may work another way but uh, I think if we get creative and we're willing to work together that's kind of the core of it uh, and so being able to walk alongside people to do that um, has been a big part of what we do. But mm -hmm. as we move forward, I would like to be able to do that in a more uh, mm -hmm. professional capacity, you know, providing that as a service um, in, a, in a more full-time way. Wow. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that looks like. Um, and then, of course, we want to uh, continue to not just tell the story of what we've done, but we want to uh, continue to have adventures, continue to travel so that the story is a uh, an ongoing thing that people look on and don't say, 
oh, well, he had this one time bucket list experience. Right. Uh, and then everybody went away. It's like, no, this is a life that we mm-hmm. live. And uh, so back in September, we went to China uh, and we got to spend time with uh, some care centers that are uh, designed for orphans with disabilities. And so we got to play with the kids and, and hang out with the staff. Uh, as well as, you know, hikes the Great Wall and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and so being able to, you know, as we move forward, doing more trips, but with that kind of purpose of um, connecting with the disabled community of wherever we are mm. and um, hopefully being an encouragement to them in person. Wow. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. and um, It really is. We'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. It really is. And, and, and just hearing you talk about it, it's, you know, I see the sort of uh, metaphorical role reversal where you're mm. taking all these adventures. You're literally being carried on somebody else's back to, um, to facilitate these adventures. And, and, um, but when you get there and when you sit down with families and other people with disabilities and you inspire them to accommodate the way they need to accommodate, um, in order to have as rich of a life you're in essence in in, temporarily kind of carrying them on your back right and allowing them through your experiences to kind of ride along long enough to to realize that they that they can do that and um with your backpack and i'm assuming the backpack is a regular backpack right where you could put your stuff in and but (laughs) has, has accommodations to where you could put somebody like yourself on the back as well is that fair to say um, I would say it's it, it's uh, primarily the excuse me it's primarily the latter and okay. uh, and then se- secondarily the former. Um, gotcha. So we started with a uh, a toddler carrier from a company called Deuter, D E U T E R. They're a German backpack company, and it was designed for like you know a forty pound toddler yeah. to be able to be carried, um, and we kind of re, redid the whole thing, um, retrofitted it to be for a 65 pound grown man. And so uh, we've been able to work with them uh, for the past couple of years to take what we did and uh, do not just a professional version of that, but also uh, continue to make modifications and tweak it to be gotcha. uh, more adjustable for more uh, needs of the disabled community. So I think that that's a real, you know, like it's one thing to um, tell your story and to talk to people and to have this kind of um, conceptual idea of being able to, to accommodate and, and, and do things. But I think having this backpack for you is going to bring that to another level because I think it's going to be a, something very tangible to people yes, where they exactly. go, wait a minute, this is you know, I can order this thing and, and, and get going. Or if it's not that, I can order something and get going. This is not just an idea that I have to figure out. Um, right. But it's something that uh, is just doable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer just a, an inspirational story from a distance, but it's mm-hmm. uh, something that you can have for yourself. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think, cool. you know, and, and even just the idea of people helping people um it's it's manifested so clearly in uh the use of the backpack and so you know hopefully as i said before hopefully we can provide other options down the road but this is what we're focused on right now and um and so yeah i think it does provide a tangible um applicable way for people to act on that uh concept well, I think that uh, here's here's my request and my wish. I think that you should also design a backpack that's not necessarily for carrying somebody around, but inspired by you that um, that you could sell to the masses and and raise money. Because I know I would I would buy one of those. Um, <laughs> so, so think <laughs> think about that and send me an email when you have it. Sure, uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the it's just what an amazing story. I mean, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to me, you know, and it's got to be inspiring to a lot of other people. And, uh, you know, like I said, what a, what a great way to spend your life, spend your day and um, and really get involved with something that just matters to you. One last really, really, really important thing. This is going to be the most important thing of the podcast and you know it's coming because you told me not to let you off the hook. 
Uh-huh. Which Ninja Turtle? Oh man. Okay. So Michelangelo, I'm, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello. I you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Michelangelo. Okay. Um and I, I say that because um I I'm gonna be that generational guy and uh ask, are you familiar with the Enneagram? Tell me, say that again with the the Enneagram personality stuff. A little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, then I'll skip it. I won't use that as a, an example. But I, I, you know, maybe instead of an Enneagram or a uh, Myers Briggs, everyone should just be uh, a ninja. You know, cla- yeah, classified by Ninja Turtles. <laughs> that would be great. But um, I, I think right now, I uh, my favorite and the one I identify most with is my flame toy because oh. I'm so much like. I want, to be, I want to do stuff, I want to have fun and, and be out there and um, just be with my friends, kind of goofing off and, and bringing more and more people into that, um, you know, hence uh, the conversations and, and stuff that we're doing. So, um, but just that kind of lighthearted, um, you know, having fun kind of thing is, uh, I get that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and your friend is clearly Leonardo with his katana. So. Oh, sure, sure. And then uh, my roommate, Ben, is uh, Donatello because he's the one that actually thinks through everything. And, so, oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, am- that, I guess that leaves me. I'll jump in as Raphael if you don't have anybody else. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask who you would be. So. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's funny. I identify myself probably as a bit of a Michelangelo, but that's probably more of like a... Um, like, I think you live Michelangelo a little bit more than I <laughs> I might a little bit, too. But um, I was you're, you're the Michelangelo of uh, New Hampshire. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, hey, I would I would be a Ninja Turtle with you any day. Um, yes. I really, I really appreciate you coming on and, and uh, talking to us. And what an inspiring story. I feel like we could do this over and over again and, and forever. I'm sure you've got more and more stories. And oh, yeah. Maybe on that note, we'll we'll have you back again. But um, yeah. don't be a stranger to us. Please keep in touch and let us know what you have going on. Marissa, um, who's our producer, uh, is going to um, make sure that we have all sorts of links to all the different things that you're doing. So if you've been listening to this and you and you want to, um, you know, read more on the web, um, find books and stuff like that, we'll make sure that all that stuff is available in the notes. And um, really cool, man. Thanks, thanks yeah. so much. For- joining us awesome thanks Mark. yeah you're welcome this is mark miller thanking kevin chandler and reminding you to keep it accessible the iap interactive accessibility podcast is brought to you by interactive accessibility the accessibility experts you can find their access matters blog at interactive accessibility.com slash blog